Hello, boys and girls. Mrs. Pakora here, back to read A Good Night for Ghosts. We left off. Everyone was in the haunted blacksmith shop, and the pirates were there. And then Dipper started playing the trumpet. Jack and Annie started banging um, sticks to make noise. And the trio started singing a song. So let's see what happens as they're singing their song to the ghosts. As the trio sang, the ghost of Jean, Jean Lafayette started to dance. He shook his head and clapped his hands. He waved his arms through the air. He turned in a circle. Go, Mama, go, he shouted. Lafayette's crew began dancing like their captain. All of the ghost pirates moved in a circle, shaking their heads and waving their hands. Some floated off the floor, turning this way and that. Little Max sang, hey, Papa, hey, Mama, hey, 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 hey. All the pirates shouted, hey, hey. Dipper played the trumpet. Jack and Annie drummed on a bucket. The trio sang. The floor shook. The windows rattled. And all the pirates stomped and shook, doing the heebie-jeebie dance. Swing that music, shouted Jean Lafayette's ghost. So boys and girls, here's a picture of everyone singing and dancing. Yar! The pirates all shouted. Yar! Yar! The front door suddenly banged open. Go, Mama! Go, Papa! Go, go, go! Shouted the ghost of Jean Lafayette. He danced out of the shop and his pirate crew followed one by one. As the ghost danced out of the shop, Dipper kept playing, the trio kept singing, and Jack and Annie kept drumming. My crew and I sure enjoyed your visit! The pirate ghost captain shouted back to Dipper and the others. Be sure to come back same time next year. The ghost of Jean Lafitte turned and waved his arms in the air. Come on, boys. Papa's doing the heebie-jeebie dance. Then, doing the heebie-jeebies dance, all the pirate ghosts danced away into the dark New Orleans night. Chapter 9. Working Man Blues. Dipper stopped playing. The boys stopped singing. Jack and Annie stopped drumming. There was silence. They all crept to the open doorway and stepped outside. The rain had stopped and the wind had died down. The air felt clean and cool. Stars shone overhead. The pirate ghosts were gone. Whoa, that was something, said little Mac. What just happened? Was it a dream? asked Big Nose Sydney. Was those ghosts real? I don't know, said Dipper, but I'll tell you this. You'll never, ever get me back at that shop again. Everyone laughed. Even Happy looked happy. Hey, Dipper, how'd you get so good on that horn? He asked, grinning. I practiced for two years at the Waif's home, said Dipper. That's how. You got to blow that horn while we sing, said Big Nose Sydney. Come on with us now. We really do have an important gig tonight on a riverboat. A riverboat? Jack and Annie said together. They looked at each other. Their research book said that Louis Armstrong developed his musical talents performing on riverboats. That's right, said Little Mac. Oh, wow, Dipper, you have to go with them, said Annie. Yeah, man, said Jack. But Dipper just shook his head. Sorry, folks, but I can't play tonight. I have to get up early for morning, in the morning, to haul coal. Oh, Dipper, said Little Mac. Oh, Dipper, said Jack. Don't y'all worry about me, said Dipper. Have a good time on the boat, fellas. Hang on to that smile, Happy. I'll try, said Happy. See you later, said Big Nose Sydney. So long to y'all, too, little Max said to Jack and Annie. Bye, said Jack. Good luck on your gig, said Annie. The three boys waved and took off. Dipper looked after them for a long moment. Then he turned to Jack and Annie. Here's your horn back, he said. Thanks for letting me play it. He handed the trumpet to Annie. Do you want to keep it? She said. No, thanks. I have my horn home back at my house. A cornet they, cornet they gave me at the waif's home, said Dipper. Someday, when I'm grown, maybe I'll bring it out again. I think you should have gone with the fellows, Dipper, said Jack, to share your musical gifts. I know, I know, said Dipper, to share my musical gifts with the world. He shook his head as if he were shaking off a thought. Then he beamed a big smile at Jack and Annie. Hey, weren't we talking about dessert a little while back? That's a gig I can get behind and still get some sleep. Come on. As Dipper led Jack and Annie down a rain-slick street, the wet sidewalks glistened like silver. Life had returned to the French Quarter. Horses and mules splashed through puddles. Street lamps burned brightly outside dance halls and restaurants. 
Waiters carried tables and chairs back outside. When Dipper, Jack, and Annie came to Jackson Square, they found kids playing music again. A band was playing a song Jack knew, When the Saints Go Marching In. A few people in costumes were wandering about. Dipper led Jack and Annie to the back door of the River Cafe. Cook here is a friend of mine, so don't worry about the waiters, he said with a wink. Be back in a minute. He slipped into the cafe kitchen. As Jack and Annie waited for Dipper, they could hear jazzy music coming from the square. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Teddy was right. I love New Orleans, said Annie. Me too, said Jack. But how are we ever going to accomplish our mission for Merlin? Dipper seems like he's never going to change his mind about making music. I know, said Annie. In fact, I was just thinking that we might have to do something really drastic. What's that, said Jack. Show him our research book, said Annie. Whoa, said Jack. Do you really think? Before Jack could finish, Dipper came back outside. Mm -mm, talk about something good, he said. He clutched a greasy napkin filled with freshly made donuts. Follow me. As Jack and Annie followed Dipper to the river, Jack's mind was racing. Should they show Dipper the research book? It would prove they'd come from the future. What would Dipper say? What would he think? It's too weird, thought Jack. Let's just try talking to him first, Jack whispered to Annie. She nodded. Dipper led them to a bench near the water. Jack and Annie sat on the wet wood on either side of him. Dipper unwrapped the donuts and handed one to Jack and one to Annie and kept one for himself. Careful, said Dipper. The sugar get all over y'all. Jack lifted the warm, sticky donut to his mouth and took a big bite. Powdered sugar, flour, butter, vanilla, all melted in his mouth. It was mighty good. Nobody talked while they ate their donuts. When they were finished, they all wiped their sticky fingers on their shirts and pants. By now, Jack's clothes were soaked with rainwater, coal dust, kitchen grease, sweat, and grime. A little powdered sugar and butter won't make a bit of difference, he thought. So, Dipper, said Annie, you know you're a really great musician, don't you? Dipper smiled at her. Actually, you're a creative genius, added Jack. Dipper laughed out loud. And y'all know who you are, don't you? Yep, the big biggest potato head you ever met, finished Jack. But this time we're right, said Annie. Nope, sorry, said Dipper. I'm definitely no genius. The truth is, I never got past elementary school. Oops, sorry, boys and girls, trying to get it up here for you. I don't even know how to read music. But don't you love to play music, said Annie. Yeah, sure I do. Sometimes I got music in my bones, said Dipper. Sad to say, all I ever really want to do is blow my horn. Then why don't you, asked said Jack. He felt desperate. Even without their mission for Merlin, it seemed incredibly sad that Dipper had turned his back on his music. Yeah, why don't you go play on the riverboat with the fellas, said Annie. It wouldn't hurt you to miss a few hours sleep. Dicker, Dipper took a deep breath and let it out slowly. When I was 12 years old, I got too rowdy one time. He said, it was New Year's Eve. I was singing with the fellas. I got carried away and fired off a gun just into the air. I wasn't trying to hurt anybody, but I got caught and I got sentenced to two years in the waves home. I just got out a little while ago. I feel really bad for letting my family down like that. So right now, all I want to do is help them by keeping a steady job. But what about a job playing music, said Jack. Great musicians can make a lot of money and help their families. Not playing the music I want to play, said Dipper. At least I haven't met any, have you? Yes, actually we have, said Annie. She turned and looked at Jack. We have to do it. Jack sighed, then nodded slowly. Annie was right. He reached into his bag and pulled out the research book. A History of New Orleans Music. Chapter 10. All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop there for now, and then we will continue on to see what happens when they show him the music book. Bye-bye.